I have been seeing so many of these patchwork quilt inspired dresses lately and they have ignited something in me. I mean, I see a lot of clothes that ignite something in me, but this I thought I could actually make simply and quickly enough that I wouldn't get started and then get tired and then leave the half finished project sitting in my closet for several months. So today we're making a patchwork dress. Just a disclaimer up top, if you're looking for the most technically correct high level experienced sewer instructions, this is not the video for you. I'm so sorry. However, if you are curious to know how an inexperienced sewer with absolutely no technical skill, just figuring it out as she goes along, made this dress in a day, you're in the right place. Let's get to it. All right, first you'll have to sketch your idea or use my sketch. I love the look of a slightly poofy, short baby doll silhouette, and I really like how larger square patches look, so that's what I drew here. Next, I had to figure out exactly what size each of these squares would actually be. This part involves some light math, but stay with me, we can do it. So first, for the bodice, I know my bust measurement is about 32 inches and I wanted it to have a slightly looser fit, so I figured five seven by seven inch squares would give me a 35 inch bust measurement, which would be nice and loose and comfy, but it would keep it at a seven inch length, so it would be nice and cropped. This way of calculating can be customized to any bust. Basically, just divide your bust measurement by however long you want the squares to be, and that's how many squares you'll use. Honestly, this is probably the most I've ever had to use math in my everyday adult life, and it is like fourth grade level math. For the skirt, I just measured the length of a dress I already had that I know I like the length of from like, you know, the waist point to the bottom hem, and it was 19 inches, so I figured I could make my squares 10 by 10 inches, so I went with six 10 by 10 inch squares for the first tier, and then eight 10 by 10 inch squares for the second tier. Also, if you want a midi or maxi dress, just add another tier of squares or two onto the bottom. So it's time for you to grab your piles of $1 thrifted fabric that you've been hoarding in your closet. Or maybe just go get some fabric you like if there's like something wrong with you and for some reason you don't have piles and piles of thrifted fabric hoarded up in your closet like a little pack rat. I don't know why you wouldn't have that, but whatever. Once I sorted through my fabrics and selected the ones that I thought would match well together, I started on the bodice portion. So for this section, I cut out five eight by eight inch squares, so there would be half an inch of seam allowance on each side. And I use a ruler to measure the first square, and then I just like use that square as a template and cut around it loosely <laughs> for all the other squares. Listen, I told you this was not gonna be done correctly but it was gonna be done. Then for the skirt, I did the same thing, but with 10 by 10 inch squares, and I didn't add an extra inch for seam allowance on these because I knew they were already kind of rounding up and a little bigger than I needed. Also, make sure your fabric is really wrinkly before you do this. This is imperative to the process. I'm just kidding, please iron it. I don't know why I didn't iron it first. It'll be so much easier for you if you iron it. If you run out of fabric, just cut up your clothes. Okay, don't cut up clothes you wear, but this is actually a great project for sentimental pieces you don't wear, but you don't want to get rid of. For example, my friend got me this shirt while she was studying in Thailand, and it's just always been too small, but I never wanted to get rid of it because it's such a nice memento. So now it is finally being put to great use, and I will be reminded of it every time I wear this fabulous dress. Oh, but if you actually do run out of fabric and you don't have any clothes that you want to cut up, you can always buy more, but you could also if you have smaller pieces of fabric, but you've run out of pieces that are big enough, you can use the smaller pieces to piece together the right size patch that you need, like I did with these two triangles here. Finally, once you've got all your squares cut out, it's time to arrange each row of squares in order. I just tried to pick ones that look nice together and avoid placing the same pattern right next to each other or right on top of each other. After you have all those arranged, It'll probably be around 1am because you started this really late at night for some reason, so take a little break. Maybe go to bed? Just an idea? Then when you wake up the next day, just sew the squares for each tier together in a row, and voila, you've got three new scarves. You wanna sew? You can do it. Okay, well if you're not gonna sew, you kinda have to move, Comet. Hi, so I forgot to mention this when I was filming, but this is also the time when I sewed my two triangles into a bigger square patch before connecting it to the rest of the squares, so if you have any straight pieces to patch together, now's the time. Okay, back to the video. 
Okay, now it's time to turn those scarves into a dress. First, I pinned the two open ends of the bodice together, and then I tried it on pin together because I just wanted to make sure it fit right before I actually sewed it. And I did get stabbed by a lot of pins while I did this, but I'm glad I figured out that I liked the fit. Then I sewed it in place. For the next tier, obviously, it's much wider than the first tier, so we have to gather the fabric, which basically just means scrunch it all together. To do this, I just sewed a straight stitch using the largest stitch size on my sewing machine across the entire top edge of the tier, making sure to leave both ends loose. This way, we can pull on the thread from each side, and then it'll scrunch the fabric together like this. Then you're just gonna have to keep scrunching and then moving the scrunched part down until it's all evenly dispersed and scrunched enough to fit within the bodice. This step does take a bit of patience, so just go slow, don't rush it, don't push it. If you try to force it, the thread might break, and then you'll have to start all over, which is going to be way more frustrating. So just don't rush it. You'll do great. Once you have it all gathered enough that it lines up with the bodice, you can finally knot the ends of the thread, and then you can sew close the loop, first of all, and then sew the tear to the bottom of the bodice, right sides together. Also, make sure you line up your patches how you want them before you sew it. Now, if you want, you could just stop here and attach straps and you would have an adorable top. I might actually make another version of this. That's the top later. But if you're saying yes to the dress, it's time for the bottom tier, where I basically just did the exact same thing again. If for some reason you sewed the bottom tier into a closed loop before being able to gather the fabric, I don't know why you would do that. I would never do that. Never have done that, but if, if you did it, don't worry, you can do pretty much the same thing when it's already in that cylindrical shape. It's just a little less straightforward, but same process applies. <gasps> What's that? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a dress, almost. It's starting to take shape. All that's left is hemming and straps. First, just to get it out of the way, I hemmed all the way around the bottom edge with a straight stitch. By the way, I'm using gray thread for this because it seems like it would blend in the most with all the different kinds of fabrics I have here. It's finally time to make this thing actually wearable and add straps. I really like straps that tie at the shoulders because A, it's adjustable, so you don't have to make sure you measure them perfectly, and B, it's just such a cute detail. That said, at this point, I was kind of running out of material. I basically just grabbed whatever I had left that I could make into kind of long enough rectangles. So apologies in advance, these aren't the most luscious, voluminous shoulder ties, but they do the job. And they're so cute, I think. Normally, I would sew these into tubes right side together and then turn them inside out and then top stitch them. But I was trying to save time, so I was like, maybe I can skip the inside out part. So instead, I just pinned the raw edges folded in as though I were hemming this little rectangle. And then I folded the rectangle in half and then I pinned that closed with the raw hems already tucked inside. Did this overly complicate things to the degree that it maybe actually took longer. Maybe? But look how fast it's going for you. See? They're already pinned. Oh my god, they're already sewn. Technology is amazing, I tell ya. The only thing left now is to attach these guys and hem the top edge. So first I pinned down the top edge how I wanted to hem it, but then before sewing, I tried the whole thing on inside out and also pinned the straps on where I wanted them to go in the front. Then I took the whole thing off and pinned the back straps just so that they would be symmetrically lined up with the front strap. Then I tried it all on again, right side out, to make sure I actually liked the placement and could tie the straps together and everything was as it should be. Once I had tried it all on, I just sewed a straight stitch all around the top edge to hem it and attach the straps in one clean line. All right, y'all, are we ready to see the finished product? In all its glory, I'm really proud of it. Voila. I want you all to know that even with this being my first time ever gathering fabric for a sewing project, my first time doing patchwork, honestly my first time actually measuring anything, I was totally uncertain whether this would actually turn out when I started it, but I absolutely love it. It's exactly what I pictured, and if I can make it, you can too. I am certain. Oh my god, if anyone actually does make this, I will be stunned and completely honored. 
So if you do, please like tag me or DM me a picture on Instagram. I would love to see. If you liked this video, check out my last DIY clothing video. And uh, I heard if you like, comment, and subscribe, I'll do more DIY videos.